Right, we'll go ahead and get started. So, hello everyone, and welcome to another webinar with Wes. My name is Wes Fryer, and today is actually Leap Day, I guess, for Leap Year. It's February 29th, 2024, and tonight we are going to be talking about custom GPTs. And if you have used ChatGPT, this is really a way to elevate your use of the tool to another level. And the resources for this uh, webinar are available on webinars.westfriar.com. So I just have a really simple slide basically giving us an overview. Um, we're going to talk about what custom GPTs are and why you would want to use one. Um, I have a number of examples that I'd like to show you at least hopefully three of. And then I'd like to do a live demo um, creating a new custom GPT and I'm going to use a book um, as long as I can find it on my hard drive which I think I can because um, I have I have done this before but not with a custom GPT um, it's something that I actually did for our Sunday school class <clears throat> when we were studying um, a great book about uh, the housing crisis and we wanted to have summaries of each chapter with discussion questions and vocabulary words and things like that and so I've done that with Claude um, and I just put my query in each time um, and so I'm going to create that tonight as a custom GPT. So custom GPTs are basically advanced queries or prompts that you have for chat GPT that you would like to use over and over again. The first example that I'm gonna demonstrate, and this is gonna be the one of the best ways to, to um, you know, get our heads around what this is, is for image visualization. And so um, I have different things that I will do, sometimes on a weekly basis, sometimes I'll do these almost on a daily basis, and because I don't wanna just put all of the details of the prompt in over and over again, um, I have built this essentially custom program that is going to allow me to, um, you know, just n save myself time by reusing it. Um, it's a computer program is really what it is. It's an algorithm, but it is using prompts. And the other thing that's very unique about it is you can create a custom library that is given priority when you are giving your your GPT a query. In other words, instead of using its entire knowledge base of everything that that uh, that is in, that it has ingested or that it has consumed, ugh, and I just saw I have my my link wrong here. Um, it is going to it's going to use your uh, information that you have put into the library. So let me show you um, how to get to the resource page for tonight. Um, if you go to just webinars.westfriar.com, underneath archives, this is where I'm putting the links, and here's ours for tonight, which is custom GPTs. I'm going to go ahead and drop this, if I can, into our chat. And so I'll put our chat here. Please feel free, and I'm going to send this to hopefully everybody. Um, please feel free to put things in the chat. Um, I guess, yeah, I can. I'm going to drag that over here to my second screen. Um, tonight I've got my two screens set up going, and so I should be able to see any questions that you have, um, and I would love to make this as interactive um, as we can. So uh, this is the web page where you can actually access the slides that I am using, and then I've got these links that I'm going to be putting in, and if there happen to be some other things that I mention and talk about in tonight's webinar, I will put them here as well. Um, I have decided to make all of my webinars free, <clears throat> but if people would like to have a recorded version of this, whether they want to attend live or not, um, I have decided to try to sell those for $3 a piece. And so that's what um, I uh, have done uh, with the one from a couple weeks ago with Bibleverse visualization. Um, all of the resources and links and the slideshows available, but the actual recorded video um, can be purchased um, if uh, anybody would like to do that. So here we go. Um, let's uh, talk a little bit about what a custom GPT is. Um, I would, let me make sure I'm going to do this right. Okay. Um, what I'm going to do, oh, that's what I was going to, I did. I dropped the link in. So if you'd like to get to this, here's my chat GPT. I am paying for chat GPT. I'm paying $20 a month at this point. And when you are in ChatGPT, it is just the prompt here saying, you know, what do you want to do? You can go ahead and prompt it. If you pay for the 
you know, commercial version, the, the paid version, um, you can have access to a number of things. And those include um, GPTs that other people have, have written. And I guess I should talk about this first. So I'm going to click Explore GPTs. And even for the ones that I have created, and I'm going to show you the ones that I have made, um, you can decide if you want to allow other people to have access to those or not. Um, these are categorized, and you can see that some people, have, like I have, have created their own image generators. Um, some of these are, you know, designating, look, that's going to be to cartoon yourself. Um, that's to, um, you know, make a tattoo. Um, there's all kinds of, of things. There's some that are focused on writing. These are all prompts that have been written by other people. Now, the number one um, GPT here under Canva, I was actually really disappointed with. If you haven't used Canva, it is a phenomenal graphic design so a piece of software. It's, it's web-based, but there's an app for iPhone. And Anyway, I was disappointed because it just really seemed to be something that pointed you to some templates that it had. Um, but anyway, you can browse and utilize all of these GPTs. The thing you can't do with these GPTs is open them up and see the prompts that people have used to create them. And that's one of the things that I'm going to show you tonight. So I'm going to go ahead and click over here on my own menu for ChatGPT, and I'm clicking on Image Visualization. And actually, let me show you um, an example that I did. Um, I guess, didn't I just... Yeah, I, I, uh, I use visualizations quite a bit um, for Bible verses. That was a session that I did a couple weeks ago. And so um, this, this is the documentation of the chat that I had. Um, the first thing that a custom GPT does is it, it asks you how you want to be prompted. Um, and so I have it ask for what kind of image that I would like. Um, and I've given it 10 choices. I've programmed those in. Then it, um, I guess it first asked me what size that I would like. Then the type of image, and then it goes ahead and creates it. And so it, it you know, gave me an image for this particular Bible verse, and I said, um, hey, I, um, you know, I don't want any text on that. Can you go ahead and remake it? And so it recreated it. And then I, you know, told it to simplify it and not have as many people. And then it created this image with this tree. Um, and I said, that's good, um, but I really want you to focus in on these words, you know, learn to do good, seek justice. And so it created another version. And, you know, then um, I said, I love this, but can you offset the tree? It never really was able to offset the tree. Well, it did, I guess, but then it made the people really small. And so anyway, and then it put more text on. And I ended up going back to an earlier image. But this is an example of how using GPT, whether you're using a custom GPT, which again, you have to pay for to have access to. And I would say you have to pay for that whether you're using someone else's custom GPTs or your own. Um, you can't, to my knowledge, use these without being on the pro tier. This shows how iterative this can be, and it's not, and in my experience, a lot of the power of this is not just saying, you know, hey, do this, and it does it once, and oh, okay, great. It's really this conversation going back and forth. Okay, so let's do one. I'm going to go ahead and click here on image visualization. You can go to this, if you want, from our resource page by clicking the first link that says image visualization, and I'm going to go ahead and copy that, and I will drop that link there in the chat if you'd like to um, click on that. And so I have created this where it says image visualization, create a visualization of a word or phrase. And then I have created this prompt so that when I click on this, it asks me, what is the aspect ratio of the image you want to create? Now, I have honestly found that it doesn't always follow this, um, but it's also improving all the time. And a lot of times I'll just select the first one, which is a square image, and I try to specify the pixel size, which is 1500 by 1500. I have also programmed, but it really doesn't require any special code or knowledge. I've just given it instructions to say, after you ask me the aspect ratio, like whether it's square or landscape or a banner or whatever, what kind of image do you want to use? And I have some descriptions here. So photorealistic, sketch style, oil painting, comic style, watercolor, pixel art, surrealistic, impressionist, cartoon style, or digital art. And I actually think the next um, webinar I'm going to do, I'm going to do it about um, using sketch notes to uh, visualize Bible verses. 
I have a number of books that I am working on, and the one that I'm three chapters away from finishing is actually um, all about sharing faith you know, with technology. It's called Pocket Share Jesus, Be a Digital Witness for Christ. And so one of the things I think I will do with my webinar series is kind of focus in on some of the different chapters. So I'm going to choose Sketch as the style, and I've got that as a number, so it just makes it fast for me. I can do this, by the way, on my phone using the iOS or the iPhone app for um, for ChatGPT, and I love that because I'm I'm not doing it every day, but I'm usually doing this at least two or three times per week uh, with a meditation and a little verse that I have. So now it prompts me, because I programmed it to prompt me, please share the phrase or concept you'd like me to visualize in a sketch style. So I'm going to say, uh, please visualize a Zoom webinar about creating sketch notes or visual notes about Bible verses that can be shared on, I can spell right, social media. Okay, now I could have gone ahead and had this prepared. I could have something really long. Uh, sometimes I will copy a bunch of Bible verses. Sometimes, I, I'm going to show you in a second, um, I actually have make a transcript of an entire hour long video and in that case I'm going to upload the file that's going to be the second demo I'm going to show you but anyway this can this there is a limit to how long this can be there's a phrase for this and it has to do with the tokens that the AI is able to do um, and uh, one of the thing and, and Google just there's been a lot of hoopla over Google's AI tool this last week and some objectionable things that people created with it but, you know, this is probably the worst tool like this that we're going to see. And it's, it's still pretty generous in terms of how much content it can process at once. So here is the sketch version of that. Um, I don't like the fact that the notes that the person is creating, and they also they have two pencils that looks kind of weird. Um, I'm going to go ahead and tell it to change that. So can you please change the notes the person is drawing? so they include both sketched images as well as text. Um, and I can say this is what a sketch note is. And as an example, so I'll go to my show with media site, which is a site I've maintained since 2013. Um, and I have these different media products that people can create and um, I'm going to just copy the definition and paste it in here. Okay, so I'm giving it more information and asking it to redo the image. Um, again, this is, I think, an essential and powerful, powerful part of using ChatGPT without, with, you know, in, in whatever way you are, whether you're using it in the free version or not. I also think that in order to create images, you have to be paying. And so this is, it's interesting because I think probably Google and a lot of companies have wondered how to get people to pay for search because search was, was free, you know, when it, when it started on the internet. I remember the Yahoo search engine and with Google. And um, look at that. That is awesome. Oh my gosh, I love that. Um, and so anyway, now they're, I'm paying for, for search, but it's so much more than search. <coughs> okay, fantastic. So here's my image. Um, I love it. I'm going to go ahead and download that picture. I'm going to use that picture. Um, and I think I might use that actually as my little uh, logo for, for that upcoming webinar that I'm going to do next. Let me show you under the hood how this was built. And then I'll show you another demonstration. And then I'm going to build one of these. Um, we've been going about 15 minutes, so these this, these 30 minutes goes goes by pretty quick. Um, I'm going to click over here on my own ChatGPT on the little um, I get well I guess so that that gives me a new chat. I have to click up here where the, I've given it a title, and I come down here to edit the GPT. And so now over here in the sidebar, um, I and I don't know if you'll be able to see the zoom in if I do this. I'll, I think you can probably. Um, I guess we'll find out in the recording. Here is the configuration for what I did on this custom GPT. So I gave it a name, image visualization, and a description. Those two things are the only things that other people, if I choose to give them permission, can see in terms of this visualization. 
these instructions are hidden to everyone else. And so this is the prompt that I've given it. Um, I first underneath conversation starters, I can have more than one, but I just have one. It says, what is the aspect ratio that you want to create? The instructions say, please create a creative visualization of the following phrase shared by the user. First, however, prompt the user with these questions and choices. And so there's my question about aspect ratio. Then I skip a line and say, next, ask the second question. What style would you like me to use? So again, I don't have to remember what these different 10 styles are. If there's a new style that I want, I can put it in here. Um, but these are some different ones that I've found and I actually use ChatGPT to brainstorm them. So it's always asking me that. And I had to give numbers so I can really quickly say, oh, I want cartoon style or I want surrealistic or whatever. And it says, then create the image. It should have good resolution, at least matching the requested pixels. And that's it. Now in this chat, in this custom GPT, I did not, if I can zoom down here, I don't know if I'll be able to, um, I cannot, I did not upload any files. And in terms of the capabilities, I said I wanted it to be able to browse the web and to generate images. I didn't check the box for code interpreter. But that's it. That is the custom GPT. And man, I, I use this thing all the time. Um, here in the side uh, are all of my saved conversations that I've had with ChatGPT. I mean, I use this thing all the time. And so many of these are, you know, image visualizations. Okay. So that was the first example I wanted to show you. The next example I want to show you is a summary of some text. And let me go ahead and um, show you first sort of where we're going with this. Underneath my other links, I went ahead and put, well, I guess I'll show you this. I, under other links, I said Wes's AI photos on Flickr. So I create a lot of images with AI and most of it's with ChatGPT. And I have just created an album of these on the website Flickr for photo sharing. And in addition to sharing the picture, I also share the summary of the prompt because once ChatGPT generates an image, it goes ahead and includes the description, which is based off of the prompt. And so lots and lots of different style images. It's just amazing. I absolutely positively love um, being able to um, create these visualizations. And I just feel like it's a superpower to be able to do that. Okay, so that kind of finishes number one. Here's where we're going next. This is going to be a summary of an actual podcast, but it's a video. This is the podcast that I co-host most Wednesday nights with my friend Jason Neifer, who's up in Missoula, Montana. And so the audio here is a full hour of audio. It's usually about like this was an hour and six minutes. We live stream over both YouTube and Facebook yeah, using a great tool called uh, um, StreamYard. And so what I do is, I'm, and I'm about to demonstrate this, I will take the video make a transcript of that. It's an hour long, so it's quite a bit of text. And then what I have the chat GPT, the custom GPT do, is I have it generate this summary, which follows my own writing and the writings, that, the, the, the uh, examples that I have prepared already. So uh, let me do this, but I'm going to go ahead and show you under the hood first um, before we do this. So here is the custom GPT. Again, this is this is linked if you wanted, would want to check it out. But if this is very custom for, for my purposes. So this may not be something that's as applicable, you know, for other people. Here it is. I can, again, because it's mine, look under the hood. So I'm going to say edit the GPT. And, and here's the description I say in the instructions. I need your help writing and generating summaries of past podcast episodes I've recorded uh, with my friend Jason. The name of our podcast is all of our, you know, podcasts. I give a background information about it. And I say every episode should begin as follows, except you should insert information. And then the conversation starter, I originally wanted it to generate the transcript and they have guardrails on the AI on ChatGPT in terms of what it can do and it can't do. And one of the things it can't do is go out and, and grab the transcript from the link. And so I end up needing to do that first, but it's not very hard. Here's what's different about this custom GPT. I have my own essential library. They're called knowledge files. And so these are podcast summaries that I have written previously. And I ask the GPT to match that 
exam those examples and and basically mimic them, but use the content from the new uh, podcast episode. Okay, and this is I, I use the I'm a little behind actually, but I will I will basically use this every single week. So here's the example. This is the most recent podcast from last week that Jason and I recorded. This is an hour and three minutes long. And so what I'm going to do is copy the link to this video, which by the way, you can do this with any video that you'd like. Um, I'm going to go to a website that I have linked here on our page called youtubetranscript.com. And so this website grabs the auto-created transcript from any YouTube video, which, and it may be possible, I think, for the creator to stop the transcript from being created. We don't do that with ours. Um, and so I just go ahead and click go. And so just like that, it's going to, boom, create the entire transcript. This is an hour and three minutes of talking. And it's not perfect, but it's really amazing how good it is. And so I can go down here to the bottom left corner and click copy entire transcript. And now that entire, like, it's going to be like 48 single space pages or something, is copied on my computer to my clipboard. And what I'm going to do is open a new tab and I'm going to type new.doc, or no, doc.new, sorry. Um, and that is a shortcut to create a new Google document. And I can paste that entire transcript. So if I paste it, um, huh, I guess that wasn't as many pages as I thought it was going to be. Uh, if I say the page view, is it going to show me page view? Um, Anyway, that, that, that's 13 pages? Okay, I was, thought, I was thinking it was going to be more than that. Um, this is the entire podcast, okay? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say this is podcast, I think it was 320, or I could say, I guess, episode 320. And I like to just save this as a PDF. So download this, or sorry, I'm going to save it as text. I could save it as a PDF, but I'm going to save that as text. So what I can do in my custom GPT is I can now tell it um, that I would like to um, generate a transcript for this file. So, I'll, so I actually need to go in here and edit this because I think if I, if I simply click on the paperclip and choose to upload this file, um, I think it will go ahead and do it. But I, I'll, I'll type the, the text here too. Um, please use the attached... Uh, transcript to generate the um, podcast summary as requested. Okay. Now, this used to take me at least 30 minutes to do, and now <laughs> it happens, you know, within 60 seconds. Again, I could just type that, I could just put this prompt into ChatGPT, but because I am wanting to customize this and have it you know, follow my own writing and, um, that's interesting. Huh. Okay. So there's the summary. Uh, shoot. Did I, Hmm. it's been a little while since I've done this and I was thinking that huh. I'm, I, okay. I just went ahead and clicked my prompt and tried again. So I went ahead and clicked it. There's my transcript. Here is my transcript. Maybe it does this afterwards. I didn't go through the entire directions and I forgot about this. I have it as a podcast summary and title generator because in addition to writing a summary of the podcast, it also gives me, I don't know if it's five or 10, maybe not 10, but, a, but about five different suggestions for what this show could be titled. I, tr we, I try to title our episodes, um, oh, there it goes, uh, with, with very short titles. All right, and so it asks me which of these I prefer. AI's Educational Frontier, Climate, Tech, and Education, VR Futures. Hmm. Uh, okay, let's go with one. And it's going to actually fill in the um, summary with that. So here it is. This is the summary following the models that I had done before. 
And what I can now do, and I will actually do following this webinar, is I will copy this. I will modify this. I, I've never just used it without any changes at all. But I use this as an initial draft um, because it has summarized the key ideas from that podcast episode. Again, this ends up saving me um, quite a bit of time. Okay, so I have given you a couple examples of some, some custom GPTs. Um, I've given you some other ones. Uh, as a teacher, I build rubrics, and so I've got a rubric builder. Um, I teach coding, and so I've uploaded several textbooks into a custom GPT so that I can build activities for my students for coding. Um, I also used it when I needed to write comments recently for student feedback, and I had uploaded all of my skills and I you know created this this custom tool that I could then modify um, you know for individual students let me go ahead and show you how to how I would create a GPT from scratch so I'm going to go here and I'm going to click on um, let's see is it explore GPTs okay and then yeah and then up here in the upper right corner I've got my GPTs and I have the create button so here I am I can create my um, custom GPT I'm gonna say book summary creator um, or I'll say book chapter summary creator now interestingly there's a lot of books that ChatGPT has already quote read or ingested and there's an ongoing lawsuit with the New York Times and they put limits on what it can do. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and upload the book chapter that I want the uh, this GPT to summarize. And so I'm going to say, please um, generate summaries um, and vocab. Um, well, actually, three things. Please generate uh, vocabulary questions. Um, okay, vocabulary definitions. I'm going too fast. Uh, discussion questions. Actually, I want the summary first. Please generate a chapter summary, vocabulary definitions, um, and discussion questions um, for the attached book, um, depending on the chapter selected by the user. Okay. Um, and I'm going to give it for instructions. Let me see if I can actually dictate this. Please, is that going to work? Please use the attached book, and depending upon the chapter selected by the user, comma, create a chapter summary that is no longer than 500 words. Period. Extract the key 20 vocabulary terms from the chapter and define them and provide those in a bulleted list period finally comma provide five open-ended discussion questions suitable for an adult class that is discussing this book period okay and I just on my Mac I pressed F5 so that I could dictate so there there is that prompt that is the prompt that I'm giving this now I am going to go ahead and come down here to knowledge files and this is what I've got to find and I'm getting close to my time and I'm going to come in here to documents and I'm going to try to find see if I can find this yes um, yay I got it this book was by Kevin Nye and so here is the PDF of this entire book okay this is about two megabytes in size and so in this case I'm just going to be putting that entire book that's not in a in a digital rights management locked format it's in an open PDF format that can be read um, and then I'm gonna type my conversation charter um, which chapter should I use for this summary and these vocabulary words uh, discussion questions now this is something that I had actually done previously with a tool um, with a with a different AI tool um, and this and I hadn't created one like this I don't need actually I probably won't need web browsing or dolly or code um, okay good we've got 10 more minutes and so anyway I could I could go further but I'm this is fine I'm gonna I'm gonna go with this now I'm gonna go ahead and click save and I am I'm gonna leave this one available only to me okay this is a book that I've purchased 
Um, I own the rights to this book, but I don't actually have the right under copyright like to give everyone access to this and by giving them you know this 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 tool uh, I, I think I'd be I wouldn't be on some solid ground as far as copyright but in the case of my image visualizer and other things I have actually made that available to in some cases everyone or anyone with the link that's why I can provide you with the link to be able to get to that so I'm going to confirm this is only you know available for me it is going to go ahead and build it and what I should be able to do right now is generate the summary. Now, let me show you um, what this looked like. And, I'll, and that's right, it was with Claude. Claude AI is the other um, AI tool that I have used before. I have not paid for Claude, um, but I have used this before. You can see I've used it a lot um, to generate um, these kinds of summaries, OK? Um, and I'll show you an example of what it looks like. So here is, perhaps, um, my documents here. Here is my folder for this book study. And so like, here's a summary for chapter nine. So we'll do chapter, oh, that is, that is actually chapter nine. Okay, did I include my, all right, here's chapter two. So for chapter two, it includes a summary. We can do a side, we'll do a side by side comparison. There's a summary. Oh, I had to do main ideas as well. The vocabulary terms and then discussion questions. Okay, let's see how ChatGPT does for chapter two. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on my prompt. And so the, the custom GPT says, hey, what chapter should, should you use? And why is it doing this? Um, it's already searching. So I may wanna stop this. It really shouldn't stop. And I may need to edit this and say, wait. Okay, there it goes. I can, oh, it just checked its materials. I can create a summary and other requests of materials. What chapter would you like me to focus on? Lovely. It just read the entire book, literally in that time. And I'm gonna say, chapter two, please, and press enter. So now this custom GPT says it's searching its knowledge, but it is focusing in on that document. And it could be a series of documents that I have uploaded. Um, into this, you know, library. And it's going to generate this using that information, all right? And here it is. Here is the book summary. Now, one of the things that's mind-blowing about this is that literally this GPT reads the entire book. It ingests it, and it's like I've heard about people with photographic memories. It reads the entire book in a matter of seconds, and here is the summary. And now here are the key vocabulary terms for the chapter and then it's going to give us some discussion questions. If you noticed when I did that prompt, I said for an adult audience, I teach sixth, seventh, and eighth grade students in our middle school in my day job. And so when I'm creating something for those students, I can say, create this for sixth graders or at a sixth grade reading level. And so here are the discussion questions. How does a merit-based model of addressing homelessness reflect broader societal issues towards poverty and addiction? Um, let's go over here and see what Claude had created um, for its questions. Do you agree the lack of affordable housing is the primary cause of homelessness? What are some factors that contribute? There were 10 different questions. That's amazing. That's absolutely, positively incredible to be able to do that, to be able to create a custom program like this that uses information that I have given it and then in a matter of seconds is is able to, and this is something that, that I mean, we did this whole book and, and did this repeatedly. And so it's important to check to see whether or not the, the tool is hallucinating or not. But being able to being able to do this with accuracy is really amazing. One other thing I can do is, um, can you please, oops, click in here, can you please generate a list, um, the different Bible verses uh, cited or mentioned in chapter two. So literally, I am able to interrogate the entire text. And one of the things I'll say that this entire experience so far using these GPTs, including cu the custom GPTs from OpenAI, is it really speaks to the value of having open access to text. And so it's just amazing. You know, I have the phys this physical book. Huh, interesting. That just gave me one verse. Are any other verses 
mentioned from the Bible in chapter two. Please list all of them. Maybe that's the only one, but I kind of would be suspicious if it was. Um, you know, this is not perfect. And like I said, checking there. Okay, so Philippians 2, 6 years in. There you go. Jeremiah 29, 7. Matthew 25, 37. Isaiah. Here we go. I don't know why it didn't do that at first. So again, I'm having to iterate, you know, and ask it, ask it several times. Um, there we go. There's the verses that were mentioned in the chapter. There's discussion questions. And, you know, I've read the book. I've read these chapters. You know, if I'm teaching this unit, I'm, I'm not going to just blindly give this to my students or my class, but this is a rough draft that I can use. And it's so powerful to be able to have these kinds of tools. Again, I just really think it's like giving us superpowers um, as, as people, okay, whether we're teachers or not, there's just so many different ways in which we can, we can use these tools. So, um, I appreciate you coming tonight. I think I am about out of time. Again, if you want to get to the resources that we talked about tonight, you can go to my website, webinars.westfriar.com. Anybody can go to these open archives. Um, if you have registered um, to receive the recording, I'll give you a special link that'll also include the recording of tonight's video. Um, but uh, I hope that this has been helpful to you. And at the bottom of the page, there is a link that says, please evaluate and provide feedback on this webinar. And I will also follow up um, with an email that'll come to you from Zoom um, that'll give you that link. You can also click that link that talks about following on social media. Um, my Substack is a newsletter. I'm doing it about monthly now, but that's one way to, to stay in touch. And I will be updating um, the webinars, I'm going to be taking uh, spring break off, and but I'll be announcing what those are soon. Um, those will be coming up, um, and the next one actually will be March 5th before spring break, and it's called Mastodon for Beginners. So, oh, I guess I do have two minutes. If, there's, if there are any questions that you'd like to um, post into the chat, I would be happy to try and answer those. And if we don't have any questions, I will go ahead and sign off, but... Let me know if you want to go ahead and type any questions at all. And I'm also, I'm, I'm really trying to get my books finished. <laughs> uh, and there's a bunch of books that I've, uh, I've, I've published a couple, but there's several new titles that I'm working on. And so I think that my webinar series, are, like I said, is going to, to really follow um, my book series. Um, but I guess I can mention that if you're interested. The um, page that says, it's here on the custom GPTs uh, link to follow on social media um, I think don't I have I've got links to books here and so presentations other projects and there you go pocket share Jesus and so this is near the bottom Christian writing projects and you go ahead and click this is on a, a website called press books and so I just actually have three chapters to finish but um, you can access all of the chapters and all the projects. And uh, I talked about image visualization for info pics um, in my first webinar. And like I said, the next one I'm going to do is going to be about sketch notes. So, all right. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you coming and attending. And um, don't hesitate to let me know if you have questions. And especially if you've got any requests for a particular webinar, um, I'm, I take request. I'll, I'll certainly consider requests. So, thank you so much for tuning in, and good luck creating visualized images. I guess I should have my slideshow up here for my dramatic conclusion here. Um, enjoy creating. Well, and I took. I should stop sharing my screen. So, good luck, and enjoy creating uh, custom GPTs and experiencing the power. It's so powerful and really, really an awesome thing to add to our toolkit as literate citizens uh, of the 21st century. Good night.